What is up, everybody? Uh, well, I did my motorcycle vlog this morning with the uh, Sync the Planet ride. I did that at uh, 6 o'clock this a.m. on the Eastern Standard Time. Um, that's already uploaded. So, my motor vlogger friends, uh, you're watching that. Appreciate it. Now, it's time for a ham radio video. So, um, I'll just swing the camera around so we can see what we're doing down here. I picked up a uh, inexpensive um, Blue Star Antennas portable, it's a P1 portable vertical system. And uh, uh, this is the little bag it comes in. And um, I opened it up already, but I didn't take everything out of the plastic. I cut the plastic so I could easier do this. And um, let me get this camera set up here on the tripod and maybe we can um, uh, do this a little bit better. Hi, I got it kind of like half-assed on this tripod. So let's go ahead and open this up, see what we got going on. Now I already had a, a kite winder uh, and I'll show you what that's for here in a second. Okay, I'm going to try this yet again. Uh, the camera seemed to have shut off on me the first time. Anyway, let's pull the stuff out of the bag. The first plastic bag I'm going to pull out has got the counterpoise. I don't remember the length, 35 to 40 feet most likely. It's already got the uh, connector um, affixed on there, which is cool with some um, heat shrink. And the measuring tape, feels like it's made out of vinyl. I'm not sure how long that is. I doubt it's long enough to go 30 feet out. It's probably 10 or 12 feet, but it's a nice little touch anyway. Here's a C-clamp, so you can attach the, the, uh, the mounting bracket um, to uh, railings, ar chairs of arms, beams, tree limbs, I guess. Whatever you can fit in here, um, you can attach it. Uh, and this is the bracket right here that I'm speaking. So, um, the antenna mass thread into here, the coax, this is where the counterpoise will attach. And you would uh, use a, the C-clamp to clamp this bit to whatever, and you can rotate this around however you see fit. Um, I guess you could probably take this screw out and rotate this as well and this all comes apart so you can it looks like you can mount it in a multitude of different ma methods so I could probably mount it on something this way and turn this like that so I can mount it vertically if I needed to so that's pretty cool and um, it's got their uh, logo and the universal mounting bracket printed on there it um, came with three of the I have to read the instructions but two of these are typically used for the antenna one of them is um, thrown in so you can get the CW portion of 40 meters this is a telescopic whip um, and these are just simply the um, uh, connectors to connect the uh, rods together there's two of those that was it in the bag and the part that makes this a multi-band antenna is um, this right here, this coil tap. And um, it seems to be well made. I mean, it's, it's definitely made at, at somebody's home. Um, the paint's a little coming off here just from bouncing around the bag. And you know, just like uh, so many other of these antennas you can get today that um, have coil taps, you slide this up, up and down this coil depending on, um, in order to tune it. And um, I think the rule of thumb with most of these is you get it set up and you move this until you get maximum noise on the frequency you're using and then um, you run your counterpoise out and set up your radio. I brought my um, a Rigmaster AA30 analyzer out so I could really um, show you what this antenna is, is doing once we get it all set up and um, there's the instructions for the antenna and, um, and there's always a give and take with portable antennas especially when you have to use um, uh, loaded coils to uh, get into certain frequency bands, but for portable operations, I mean the kit comes in a case here that's maybe a 12 inches long and um, uh, maybe four or five inches wide, and it doesn't weigh much. So let me get all this put together, and, um, and we'll see what we can do from there. Okay. All right. So I got the uh, the mounting bracket on my little tripod here. This is not something I'm going to use. I just happened to use this because it was in the house and it's clamped on with a C-clamp. I will just follow through with the instructions here. So first thing you do is put one of the um, rods into this connector right here and I, they emphasize only putting them finger tight so they don't bind up. There's no sense in torquing on them with a wrench. Uh, once you get that rod on there you add a second rod with a connector like I said the uh, the third rod 
um, is supposed to enable you to get in the 40 meter or the um, CW portion of 40 meters. So here's my two rods. Seems to be going together. I haven't done this before. My beautiful wife is holding the camera for me today, so um, seems to be going together fairly well. No, no problems so far. Make sure they're tight. Um, and once that's on there, we put the coil. Gonna coil those on. And then the telescopic whip. So if I get my gorgeous assistant just to hold this while I go get some tools. A few moments later. I'll tighten this up with a screwdriver. Okay. Alright, that seems to have it. And I guess it depends on the band. Or what else you need to do. I'm doing this right out in my yard under some trees, so um, I'm just going to pick a band. I guess the 20 meter band is very popular. So for the 20 meter band, they have a chart, and you can get the chart from their website. Uh, so I got the so for 14.2 megahertz, I got the two rods and the main coil at five inches, and the whip fully extended. So we will fully extend the whip here. Up into my river birch. All right, so there we go, and. I'm going to turn this a little bit and I get this a little bit more level. A little bit straighter. And this is supposed to be at 5 inches. So I'm going to attach the counterpoise. Here. Okay, so I got it set up. Uh, full extended. It doesn't look like it's very tall, really. And uh, the counterpoise for 20 meters is 17 feet. I know you really can't see this. I kind of walked it out. I measured it by stretching my arms out. I want to share too, this is the electric fence post. It's got a little, about an eight inch spike on the end and a little step right there. And I got these on Amazon. I got them for like $2 and chains a piece. I got two of them just for this purpose. So if you're out somewhere and there's no tree or something to hang your counterpoise on, well, take one of these along for two bucks, you can't beat it. So I'm going to connect the, um, the coax and we'll get on our way. Now one thing I have been using is um, this little stand, strand of coax here. It's got the ferrite beads all where, already on it, just to cut down on some common mode. And I don't, if it works or not, who knows, but um, I'm using it. So give me a minute and I'll get that connected. Okay, so at the initial setup, I don't know if you're going to read this, but um, um, I haven't made any adjustments now. As you can see, the SWR is infinity and all the other readings do not look good. So. I'm wondering what I can do to tune this, and I got the center frequency set at 14.220, so I might try to move the coil up and down and see what that does. Okay, well, I moved, just simply moved the coil up and down, and as you can see there, the um, SWR is at 1.5, and the reactance is at 7.2 ohms, so, um, and the impedance at 34, so it's not horrible. Um, you're not supposed to require a tuner. Um, I don't know if I can get this any better. I could suppose I could go mess with the um, counterpoise somewhat and see what that does. Okay, well, I did a little tweaking. The counterpoise really didn't make that much of a difference. Um, I just screwed up a little bit by moving it. So now I have a 1.6, uh, but the impedance is a little bit better. The reactance went up a little bit, but let's just go see what we can do on the radio. So my ham shack today is on my screen in the porch. Uh, I've got the ICOM IC703. I've got my uh, battery power here. And um, I have a laminated copy of the uh, band plan. I don't know how many people keep that, but you know I got most of what I can operate memorized. It's still nice to be able to just double check so you don't do anything wrong. So let's just see what we got going on here. So it's tuned to about 200 and, well I'm getting a signal on 40 meters, which is not what I want. So let's go up to 20 meters. And change the, the mode. So the frequency is quiet there, so I'm going to switch the mode to AM, just so we can watch the SWR. So the SWR is about a, looks like it's about a 1.5 to 1, so it did tune, and uh, I haven't used the tuner on the radio yet, but we can use that. And it, and it dropped it down to about a 1 to 1, so all in all, not bad, so 
um, I'll sit here and if I hear anybody and I come to make a contact I'll start recording again so um, so far I haven't made a contact but the antenna seems to be working very well so the audio is good on this frequency so it picks up pretty good and I'll try calling CQ in a second and see if anybody answers up you find a clear frequency Let's go to 14.26560. CQ, CQ, Kilo 4, Sierra, Foxtrot, Charlie, Kilo 4, Sierra, Foxtrot, Charlie calling CQ on 20 meters. All right, well, okay, focus, focus. Okay, so I got the um, antenna to tune at 7,200 megahertz. I had to add the third rod, had to lower the coil as far as it could go down to the bottom of the loaded coil and had to extend the counterpoise out to about 35 feet. And I got to about a 1.7 to one. I should have took a recording of what I, the reading on the analyzer, but I didn't. So let me just screw here. And I tuned it at 7,200 megahertz. Let's see if we can pick up somebody here. Okay, so this, this guy's in Rhode Island. I don't know who he's contacting. I should have brought my MacBook out here. I could have brought a Mac Logger DX. And... All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and try calling CQ with this just to see what I can get out there. So I might even use the tuner just to help out a little bit. Okay. Here we go. CQ, 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 CQ. Kilo 4 Sierra Foxtrot Charlie. Kilo 4 Sierra Foxtrot Charlie calling CQ on 40 meters and standing by. Calling CQ was uneventful, so I'm going to try to tune it up here and see if I can um, just send my call sign out via CW, and um, uh, I will do some uh, some uh, reverse beacon here in a minute. actually using my little kit paddle for those focus and um, so yeah we'll just see so I'm gonna cheat so I called CQ and then see if the frequency is in use I'll just do this what is this doing is sent out test and then my call sign so people will know I'm not calling for CQ and I'll go back in and check the reverse beacon network here in a few minutes and see what it did once I take the antenna down. So it doesn't mean it's a failure, it just means I didn't get any contacts, but I'll keep trying on, on SSB.